because that's one of the benefits, I believe, of being part of a local church is you get the hands on a touch. And so we will be praying and we invite you to come, as Pastor Mike said. Um, I want to share with you today, my message is part two of the last days and his people. The last days and his people. And I encourage you to listen to part one. If you weren't here, uh, listen to part one. That was recorded on May 2nd. You can go on to Elsinore Christian Center or you can go on YouTube. They're on uh, both of those venues. And watch the first message because we want you to stay in touch about what's going on, catching up. And I want to say my purpose in this series is to make you aware of what the Bible says about the last days. Now, everybody can have opinions, but I want to share straight from the Word of God about what the Bible says uh, in these last days and also to talk about what's happening in our nation right now that we need to be aware that fits into Bible prophecy, that fits right into Bible prophecy. I want to educate you. I want to edu educate you, but I want to prepare you. I want to educate you, and I want to prepare you that how do we interpret the days that we live in? I want to educate you. I want to prepare you. How do we interpret the days that we live in? How can we wisely walk in wisdom? How can we walk in the wisdom of God and discernment? If there is one thing that Christians need to ask the Lord for, it's wisdom and discernment, and he will give it to you. So I want to talk to you today about the Antichrist. And I can't finish this all in one sermon. It's going to take a couple weeks to finish up about everything that we can talk about about the Antichrist. I want to talk about the Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is at work today, and we're seeing the increase in this demonic spirit. We are seeing an increase in this demonic spirit of Antichrist. It is a demonic spirit. It's manifesting in people and ideology. I want to say it again. It's manifesting in people and ideology. It's at work today. And uh, it's infiltrating our culture. We're going to talk about that in a little bit too. It's infiltrating our culture Let's look at a definition of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a false prophet, an evil being, who will set himself up against Christ and the people of God in the last days before the second coming. The term is used only in the writings of John in the New Testament. It refers to one who stands in opposition to all that Jesus Christ represents. John wrote, and we're going to look at some of those scriptures this morning, John wrote that several antichrists existed already in his day, false teachers who denied the deity and the incarnation of Christ, and that the supreme antichrist of history would appear at some future time. The antichrist's primary work, and you've got to hear this, is deception, which also characterizes Satan and his attempts to undermine the work of God in the world. Satan's deception started in the Garden of Eden. That's where it started. And it will continue till the end of time. Antichrist is both a demonic spirit, and as we will read this week and then next week, it is going to be manifested, as we just read, in a person. Antichrist against Christ. So we want to look and see what the Apostle John said about the Antichrist. And so, Andy, if you could put those scriptures up. I want you to stand, and we will read just the first one. We've got uh, four scriptures to look at today, but just have you stand and just read with me out of a respect for the Word of God. John is writing. He says, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many antichrists have come, by which we know that this is the last hour. I want to, before you're seated, I want to point out something to you. Look what it says, last hour. You say, well, John said that 2,000 years ago, almost 2,000 years ago. 
But in God's economy, the way God looks at things and the way we should be looking at, this is the last hour. You can be seated. The last hour. Not just a day. John says it's an hour. The Antichrist is coming. And even back in John's day, John being the, one of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, he was anticipating even in John's day that the Antichrist was going to show. And then he said that there are many false teachers. There are false teachers. That's what the, how the spirit of Antichrist manifests itself. They carry the spirit of Antichrist in them. I want to say it again. A false teacher carries the spirit of antichrist in them and so by them carrying this spirit it is the last hour and i'll finish with this scripture to say it's demonic and i'll say this again to you every one of us have a spirit about us in us and we as christians need to know and discern the spirit that's speaking can that be possible? Can you do that? Yes. How do I have the, the resources to discern what's a false spirit and the, the good spirit? You have the word of God and the acid test that we're going to be talking about just now. The second scripture, if Andy, if you could put it up there. John goes on to say in a few verses later, 1 John 2, 22, look at this. Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. The acid test that we put to them is, do they acknowledge that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Now, why is this so important? First of all, look what it says. Who is a liar? The spirit of Antichrist comes from the devil himself, which is demonic. And Jesus said in his writings in John, Satan is the father of all lies. No matter how it's dressed up, how pretty it looks, how sweet it looks, how good looking they are, how, what a nice presentation. If they do not recognize that Jesus Christ is the son of God, he is a liar. God's saying that, not me. And we also need to be able to say that's a spirit of Antichrist. That's lying. God says you're a liar when you deny the Father and the Son. The truth about this is that they are ignoring and denying that the Father and the Son have a relationship. The Son is in the Father. The Father is in the Son. And when they deny that relationship, they are Antichrist. They are liar. That's just as plain and blunt as you want to be. So when you are hearing different things, all of a sudden disengage for a moment and say, God, I'm listening to what spirit is being spoken right now. What, what is that spirit? What are they saying? And listen, God wants you and I to grow in discernment to know and be able to test these spirits because every, every prophet, every prophecy, every person that gets up to preach has a spirit behind them. Spirit of God, human spirit, or human spirit with some demonic spirit all mixed in together. You cannot have the spirit of God and the demonic spirit mixed together. But this is a clear, clear, clear word to the Christian of what is a liar, but someone who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist because they deny the son and the father's intimate relationship. The Antichrist spirit denies the Father and the Son and that relationship. The third scripture, Andy, if you could put it up. 1 John 4, verses 1 to 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is already in the world. Listen to this. Believers are not to be so gullible 
that they indiscriminately accept the pronouncement of all prophets who claim to be of God. That is, to speak with divine authority and under divine inspiration. As I said, a spirit is indeed behind every prophet, but it may be a false spirit described as the spirit of the Antichrist. It's not up there, but verse 6 talks about the spirit of error rather than the spirit of God. And so, therefore, since we are many, there are many cultic and heretical, heretical teachers claiming to be spokesmen for God, we must test the spirits possessing them to determine their origin. Paul also gives a similar description in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 to 22. Every spirit must confess, and this is so important that you hear this, every spirit must confess that Jesus Christ came in the form of flesh. Because if they don't confess that, they're basically saying, I don't believe that Jesus left heaven, came in the form of a baby, into the incarnation. Jesus was both God and man, but they will deny this. This is the acid test. And you can ask them, that, is Jesus the son of God? Well, yeah, or well, he's one of the sons of God. I'm sorry, he is the son of God. Big G, not little g. He is the son of God. He came in the flesh. And God sent him. If they don't confess that, they are a false spirit. They are antichrist. Jesus came in the flesh. He was fully God. He was fully man. Understand that. He had a dual nature. He was fully man, but he was fully God. That's the acid test. We believe in the incarnation. We confess his deity and his humanity. It's funny to someone who's got a demon in them, they can't confess this. They just lock up. Because for them to confess this, that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, they've got to confess also that who's standing in front of them ministering deliverance has come in his name. Are you, did you hear what I just said? Did you understand what I said? So that's an acid test even about if the spirit that's speaking. Is it of God or, or is it of the devil? And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, again, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. It was already in the world in John's day. Let's go to this last scripture. Second John, the seventh verse. For many deceivers have gone out into the world. Now let's just stop for a minute. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess that Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. Look at those two words. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Notice the spirit that's operating in them. Look, look what they say. They've gone out. What do deceivers do? They've gone out to deceive. <laughs> the acid test again. They won't confess that Jesus Christ has been sent by God and he was fully God and also they confess he was fully man. That statement, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. Again, the word antichrist, antichrist means opponent. To oppose Christ to oppose everything that Christ wants to do and what he stands for. And of course, they're going to oppose his deity of who he is, God that's come in the flesh. God that has come in the flesh. The Antichrist spirit is in the world. And the main mission for the Antichrist spirit is to be in opposition to Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. That's why you have so much opposition against you. They don't want to, the devil doesn't want to see God move. He don't want to see people saved. He doesn't want to see people restored. He wants to keep people deceived. And listen to this, brothers and sisters. It takes, deceiving comes in many forms. Some of you might be looking at your screen. It comes through that too. It has a voice. It's to seduce you and to get you off the main thing, which is Jesus Christ as the focus. You hear what I'm saying? People, can, people with all good intentions can get their focus off the Lord and the kingdom and what's really important. 
And that's why, I don't know about you, but I got to fight every day to stay focused. I got to fight every day to stay focused because there's just so many things that want to take my focus away. And a lot of times the focus is to focus on you, your problems, your, and fears. Fears, fears, fears. Distractions, distractions. What's behind it? The spirit of Antichrist coming in many different ways. But I want to tell you that the spirit of Antichrist, as you already know this, operates in people. Before I was saved, I had Antichrist in me, and so did you. <laughs> Opposition. It's when we come to Christ and our hearts renewed and regenerated by the Holy Spirit that that possession of the devil is broken in your life aren't you glad this morning aren't you glad that that possession that the enemy had you it's broken it operates in people how is it operating right now in our culture right now i'm going to put some things up on the board but let me just talk to you just for a moment i'm doing this just to show you what's happening in our culture and how the spirit of antichrist where it's wanting to take us as Americans. A man named Saul Alinsky, who was born in 1909 and died in 1972, is considered the father of the American community uh, organization movement. Saul Alinsky is considered the father of the American community organizational movement. He wrote several books. One of the books that he wrote was Rules for Radicals. Rules for radicals. Hillary Clinton thought much of this man and wrote her college thesis on Saul Alinsky. Barack Obama, our former president, mentioned him several times in his books that President Barack Obama wrote. Had quite an influence on him because our former president was a community organizer and this man in his ideology had a real impact on a lot of people, especially Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. I'd like to put on the screen eight things that he put up there on eight levels of control. Now, that's little. Is there any way we can cut that in half even if we need to go back to it? No? Well, I will read it to you. If you want a copy of it, I can get you a copy. There are eight levels of control that must be obtained before you are able to create a social state. The first is the most important. Number one, health care. Control health care and you control the people. Think about it. Number two, poverty. Increase the poverty level as high as possible. Poor people are easier to control and will not fight back if you are providing everything for them to live. That's why people don't want to work because, hey, the government will just give me some money. Are you seeing it? Debt. Increase the debt to an unsustainable, unsustainable level. That way you're able to increase taxes and this will produce more poverty. What are we seeing at your grocery store? What are we seeing at the gas lines? What are we seeing about taxes going up? What are we seeing? Again, we might think this is just rules, but listen, there's a spirit behind this. It is an antichrist spirit behind it. Gun control. Remove the ability to defend themselves from the government. That way you're able to create a police state. We want your guns. They gave up their guns in Germany, and you know, look what happened. The Jewish people were wiped out other nations over in China. They took the guns from the people with their propaganda. That guns were the thing that's the problem. No, it's the heart of man that's evil, not guns. Welfare, take control of every aspect of their lives, food, housing, and income. Number six, education. Take control of what people read and listen to. Take control of what children learn in school. I am shocked by what our children 
are being forced. I've got, this won't happen this week. I've got some other things to bring you about part of this antichrist spirit that's operating in people that's wanting to take over our nation. Religion. Remove the belief in the God from the government and schools. Well, they've already succeeded. Back in 1962, they said you cannot read the Bible in schools. And look what's happened. No prayer, no God in schools, and we don't want God in the government. It's interesting. If it was a a mistake, okay. But when we had the National Day of Prayer, our government would not let them have the National Day of Prayer in the Capitol. It had been doing that for 30 years. They said no. A group of motorcycle guys that had been going into Washington for their ride all wanted to do it because of a patriotic one. They said, you're not doing that either. Class warfare. Divide the people into the wealthy and the poor. This will cause more discontent, and it will be easier to take or tax the wealthy with the support of the poor. Think about it. Does this sound like what's happening in the United States in less than five months? I'm very concerned about our country, but this is the spirit of Antichrist. Alinsky merely simplified Vladimir Lenin, who was one of the leaders as far as communist Russia, original scheme for world conquest by communism. Under Russian rule, Stalin described his converts, converts, listen, as useful idiots. That's what they thought of their people because they put these rules and run their lives. The youthful idiots have destroyed every nation in which they have seized power and control. It is presently happening at an amazing rate in the United States of America. And you know who's believing this stuff most because they're indoctrinated and they've had everything given to them, and, a, and, a, and I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, our children and our young people. Because we don't have any control and what our kids are learning in schools. Pastor, you're talking about the Antichrist. This is the spirit of Antichrist for control. This is setting it up for the mark of the beast and all that. America is the last great bastion of freedom. That's why the devil's working hard to control this nation. The spirit behind this happening in our society is the spirit of Antichrist. Socialism, we could call it socialism, or they could call it communism, but ultimately control and to destroy America. I wrote this down, and I'll repeat it. We must be educated, and we need to proceed. And I want to say this. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer for all of this. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, is the answer for all of these things that are going on in people's hearts and minds and in our country. The gospel is the answer for all of these things. So now I've given you a little bit of an education about how Antichrist and how it's manifesting. There's some other things I need to talk to you about that's happening that just, I am just so alarmed of where we're going. And we need, as parents and grandparents and people that are watching from home, you really need to know what's going on. Do not believe everything you hear as the gospel truth. I don't care if it comes on the Internet or Facebook or whatever. You need a biblical foundation in your life with discernment to know what's true and what's not true. One of the things that's getting Christians all caught up is there's so many conspiracy theories your, your brain is ready to snap off the top of your head because there's so many things. I don't know about you, but I get stuff every day from people that love the Lord and people that, that I know that, that are concerned about these things and what about this and read this and watch this and whatever, and I just have gotten where I'm on overload. God, I've got to stay to the foundation that we sang about this morning. 
the foundation of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit in my life and in your life. So with everything that's been said this morning in this word, I don't live in fear. I live in faith. I live in trust. I live in obedience. I live with putting Jesus first. And I tell you what I had you do earlier. I believe that was from the Spirit of God that we need to be concerned about the dead bones that you're seeing around you that have gotten cold and hard and indifferent. And you might say this morning, what can I do about it? What difference can I make about it? What can this church do about it? I tell you what, God has given you the weapon of prayer. God has given you the character of love. And God has given you the word of God as the foundation in your life. So don't give up today. Don't quit. God is on his throne. Don't look around you and look at that. Where are all the people and stuff like that? Listen, you're, as a pastor and our church, our value is not based on how many people are sitting in these chairs. But what has God said? And I cannot forget what he has done in my life and neither can you I'm going to continue preaching the gospel I'm going to continue reading my Bible and believing it and I'm still going to ask the God, our God God give us patience and endurance and he will if we do not quit and give up the anti-Christ spirit is alive and well. It's going to manifest itself in one man. There will be a false prophet. There will be the beast. And we're going to get into all that. Because you need to know. Because you're going to pay, you're going to, you need to educate some people with this as your guide. Because Jesus is coming. And I want to be ready. I want you to be ready. But we must rescue those who are perishing and strengthen the weak and tell them God is on his throne and he is, he is in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we invite you right now. If you're watching from home, anyone here, and you found your heart has drifted away from Jesus Christ being your first love I say the Lord is saying come home come home with a fresh dedication to him a fresh decision come back to him with repentance and saying Lord I'm sorry forgive me and he will Lord I'm going to put my trust in you and follow you he says come on I'm with you I am with you I will empower you by my spirit. I will bring times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. Do you believe that this morning, you that are here? Do you believe that? Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. You that are at home, do you believe that? Times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah worship him for a moment. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. The Bible says in Psalms, blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. He will open your ears again to hear that joyful sound for you to follow him with all joy and with all strength. If you need healing at home, stretch out your hand towards whatever you're watching and pray this prayer with me. 
Lord Jesus Christ, I give myself to you. And I ask that you touch me right now where I'm at. Touch me and remove fear from me now in Jesus' name. Remove depression from me now in Jesus' name. Remove discouragement and apathy and unbelief from me now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, fill my mind and my heart right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You that are here, if you would like to just come up, we're just going to pray for you. It's the Lord that does the touching and the healing. All we do is respond in faith. Just come right up here. Right now. Roxy, come here. Glenn, come here. Just put your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak life to you, Roxy. Life the life of the Spirit of God in you, in Jesus' name. I break off every...
The Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't have favorites. You're watching this from home. Believe for yourself. I read that Bible and Jesus loved everybody. <laughs> he loved everybody. He wanted to touch everybody. So believe today that what God is doing here can do in your home if you'll just believe. Jesus said, if you will, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Will you believe for yourself and for your family so you can see God's glory? Hallelujah, Lord. It's been 40, 14, 15 months since we've done this, of laying hands on people and praying. Well, it's just the beginning again. But I want to tell you, when people were touched by Jesus, that Jesus said this to them, go tell somebody. Go tell somebody. I want you to go tell somebody that Jesus touched you and bring them to this place if they need a touch. I'm not trying to take people away from their churches, but listen, go to where the faith is. Go to where the anointing is. Hallelujah. Go to where the faith is. Go to where the anointing is. And we will believe for you for your miracle. Marriages, finances, sickness, whatever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord Jesus a clap offering of thanksgiving for him? God bless you. We'll see you Tuesday night, and we'll see you next Sunday.